Oh, hey there. How good is it when you finally get your project car all wrapped up and you can just use it and enjoy it from now on? Feels good. A few moments later. I don't need it. I don't need it. I definitely don't need it. I don't need it. Well, who didn't see this coming? And I know what some of you are probably thinking, hey, I thought you were satisfied with that M90 intercooled setup. And I was, but there's only one problem with that. This thing has been sitting next to me in my computer room for like a year, year and a half, something like that, tormenting me every time that I sat down on the computer. And I figured it's about time that I actually did something with it. Um, I did some work with a friend a while ago, designed some manifolds for him because he was going to build his own intercooler manifold. And he gave me one of these for helping him out, which was pretty rad. So now it's about time that we actually do something with it. So let's have a look. So in all its glory, here is the North Star M122 off of the Cadillac STS-V. So M122, that's 122 cubic inches of air displacement which roughly equates to about two liters. So that's quite a substantial jump up from the M90. This thing's also factory intercooled. So it uses laminova cores. Um, if you know anything about laminova cores, they're highly efficient. So this thing on the 1UZ would generate quite a bit more power. Um, we're capable of running a lot more boost. Uh, currently with the M90 setup, we are running the smallest poly that we can put on that M90. It's 2.4 inches and it makes just over 10 PSI. So that's kind of the limit with that without changing the balance or anything like that to try and overdrive it anymore. So that may leave you asking, so how do you make a supercharger of a Cadillac STS-V fit a Toyota 1UZ engine? Uh, to my knowledge, there's no one actually making a manifold at the moment to directly bolt these to them. So that pretty much leaves it up to me. So we're gonna design our own. Uh, Keen-eyed viewers will take note of this bad boy over here. Basically, I'm putting this into the uncompleted projects pile. This was going to be the 100mm intercooled M90 manifold for Sora, basically. Um, this is as far as we've got with it, it's sort of tacked together. But with where the build currently sits, um, I don't actually think that there's much to be gained by continuing with that project. So if you've watched the other videos, you'd know that that 19 millimeter cooler on the other car actually ended up dropping the temps down to like the mid 70 degrees. So in theory, if we did finish off that 100 mil manifold, or the 100 millimeter inner cooler in that manifold, we could get it possibly down to ambient. But I'm guessing at most, we will probably pick up like, I don't know, maybe 20 horsepower. And it doesn't seem like it's really worth the gains. I didn't expect that little cooler to do so well on that. So. The next logical step from that is bigger supercharger. So let's have a look at the port design on this and see how we're gonna mate those flanges together. So this is what we're working with here. So this is the lower intake manifold off of the non-VVTi 1UZ. And these are the flanges for the North Star M122. Don't mind all this stuff here. It's just the aluminum foil tape that I had on there is a bit of residue. But so things we have to consider is the port shape. So we go from circles to like a rectangular shape with a notch out of it. This is where the standard fuel injector would go through on the STSV, but we wouldn't be using those. So take that into consideration. Port spacing is also different, as you can see, much greater spacing on the M122. Uh, offset, so the distance between where they meet the heads is a lot wider on here than it is on the 1UZ, so we're not really having much of a win so far. And lastly, the flanges on these are actually recessed below the supercharger, because if you don't know on these things, they actually suck from the back, blow up, 
through the core and then outside the edges here through these ports to go into the head. So we're fighting all of those battles, but I don't think that's anything that we can't overcome. So I'll do some quick measuring now and then we'll jump over to CAD and see what we can draw up on Fusion 360. All right, so this is what we've come up with. Uh, this layout for the 1UZ lower intake manifold I've actually drawn ages ago before the M90 manifolds. So that was the easy part. So from there we went through and drew the flanges for the North Star M122. So this is them laid over here and they are aligned in relation to the center line of the belt. So I basically used these holes down here and I measured from there on the motor to the center line of the belt and then did the same thing to work out from bolt hole in relation to the superchargers snout and could use those two dimensions basically to align it. So this, as you see it, will end up plotting straight on top of the crankshaft center line. So that's sweet. So the next step from here is we've got to make these geometries meet each other. And you can see that obviously they don't line up at all. So there's going to be a few lofting geometries put in place to try and make those circles meet up with the rectangles up the top and sweep out. Uh, that way it also clears the belly of the supercharger hanging down the bottom. So I'm actually going to go ahead and complete drawing the whole manifold and then I'll go back and then step by step show you the steps that it took to get to the end product. So let's get into it. Okay, so this worked out actually easier than expected. So I'll run through with how we got there. So basically we've got a bottom, a top and a mid plane. Uh, the whole reason for that is those manifolds can't just go straight up because they'll hit the body of the supercharger. So they're gonna to have to go from the lower intake manifold, V out, and then from that point go straight up to meet the supercharger. So I've decided that I want the manifolds to be five inches in height, so about 125 millimeters. Uh, that way the supercharger seam line is perfectly in line with my bonnet, same as the M90, so that way the bulk of the supercharger is all out. Um, I just like that look, so that's what we're going with. So basically we'll just start lower manifold design there. So I've used the outer perimeter of the M122 supercharger's flange and center lined that to each side of the ports for the M9, sorry, the 1UZ's lower manifold. So from there, we had to plot the geometry for the midpoint, basically. So this will be from where it comes to the bottom and V's out to that point. And that's all that there. So with that there, we can go through and basically select the perimeters of the lower perimeter and the mid perimeter and then do a lofting geometry to make a meet. So you can make one, two, as easy as that. So I'll turn these planes off just to make things a bit easier to look at. So that leaves us with that there. So that's the bottom section or bottom half of the manifold. So the easiest step from here actually is to start lofting the ports from the 1UZ's round holes to the square in the middle and you'll see why later. So basically I just went through and used this lofting toolpath here and that'll basically take that shape and then make it do a sweeping path through like a rail system to make it meet the other shape on that of the plane. So we can click through here and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whoop, there we go, as easy as that. So. Basically, if we can spin this around, I might turn those sketches off so it's easier to see. You can see that they sweep outward each in vertical axial, I guess. Um, yeah, so side to side and front to back is how they sweep out. So, yep, that all meets up there. So the next step from there is I basically selected those mid faces and then extruded them up, which is this tool up here. So that way that could get the other 65 millimeters. So this section here is 60 from the bottom to the middle and then 65 to the top. So if we jump forward on the timeline again, bam, like that, that's it. So 
that mid plane actually had all the holes in it for the bolts. So all I had to do was select the outer perimeter for it and it basically just only cares about that part and extrudes up. So that gives us all of those bolt holes and ports all lined up. So we can have another spin now and see that if we get it on the right angle, they do line up with the circles underneath. So basically from there, now it's time to figure out the mounting holes. So how this will actually physically bolt to the 1UZ stock lower intake manifold. So if we have a look at the top dimensions, these holes here will basically cut right through and then there'll be a countersunk section for the head of a cap head bolt to hold it down. So we can jump forward on the timeline again. There we go, the holes go through. And I'll turn that sketch off again so it's easy to see. And just like that, you can see that those holes all now shoot through. This one over here is actually pretty close to the perimeter, but we'll get away with it. So that seems like that's super easy and it's almost done. The only problem with that is a couple of them, if we can swing down to the bottom, you might see that this one here, I've already uh, taken measures for it because it slightly comes into the port for the supercharger. So I had to basically have some reinforcement to go through there so the bolt wasn't in the supercharger's port because last thing you want is for some reason if you had a loose bolt for it to get dropped into your intake so it's just safety measure to not have that there but some of these other ones see if we can find one there we go this one over here actually pass through into the chamber so that there is a hole in the port that is exposed to this hole here that will meet with the top so that would be that particular hole there so to fix that, I basically just go through and create another couple sketches to fix that hole. And it's one of these ones over the other side too. And that will basically, if we swing down the bottom and have a look, when I go forward on the timeline, you'll see that that will get filled in like that. So that's basically leaves just a two millimeter wall thickness that'll come down and protect that. So it's all encapsulated. So. We've got that one there, there you go, and it was this one over here was the other one. So, easy fix. So, from there, it's easy days. We basically just got to put it into the slicing software for the 3D printer. Um, I've just got a Creality Ender 3 V2, so these aren't actually small enough to fit on the bed in one piece, so I'll be slicing them each side into two, so I'll have four pieces to mock up on the car. So let's jump into Creality and have a look. All right, so now we're in the slicing software. I know I said I was gonna use Creality Slicer, but decided to use Cura instead because it's better, I like it, <laughs> why not? So from here, I've just thrown these on the bed of what it says is a Creality CR10S. I don't actually have one of them, but this is the easiest way to show you uh, how long it's gonna take basically. So when I do this, for real, I'll end up segmenting it so it prints off a quarter each time. So it'll print off half of one side and then it'll do the other side and another one. Uh, it's gonna be a bit of a long process. So settings, if anyone's interested, is nothing special. So we just got two layer height, 0.2 layer height, uh, 1.6 walls, about 80 millimeters a second to try and pump a little bit of speed out of this thing and pump through a fair bit of PLA, I imagine. So We'll click the slice button and let the computer wear up and see how long this thing's going to take. Wow, so five days, three hours and 36 minutes to print these. That's not including me changing the pieces off the bed and stuff like that, so throw in an extra hour there, I guess, but wow. So apparently we're going to use one and a half kilos of PLA. Um, you may ask why PLA. Um, if you know anything about this kind of stuff, um, you might have already guessed, I'm gonna try and cast these out of aluminium through the lost PLA method. So I did think about trying to make these out of um, like carbon fiber nylon or something like that, because it can withstand quite a bit of heat and it's fairly strong, but I don't really wanna risk that supercharger 
blown into oblivion for some reason because a plastic section of it lets go so i think much safer to just go with the casted aluminium version so i won't bore you too much with all the other stuff i'll create this g-code and get these things printed Let's see here access encoded gigabyte of ram should do the trick we're in all right what have we got So after many hours of printing, this is what we've come up with. So I'll lay this out on the table and we'll have a look at how it all sits together. Here we have the manifolds mocked up on top in all of its multicolored glory. Uh, as you can see, it is quite tall, it was always gonna be, but our supercharger will hopefully fill a little bit of that void in there so it won't be such a monstrous gap underneath. And yeah, hopefully that fills that up nicely. So I'll go through now and throw some bolts in this thing and place that supercharger on top and see how it all looks. So check this thing out. Holy, what a monster. So everything lined up. I've actually got a bolts bolted in the bottom and each corner of the blower is bolted through. I actually went through and modeled a couple threads and these before I printed them because I figured it'd actually be good to bolt it on there and make sure that it all lined up perfect and check that out. So there is a bit of a gap underneath like we were talking about, but I reckon I can live with that. But um, yeah, man, that's awesome as. I don't know if you're excited as I am, but this is gonna be wicked. So the next step from here, I guess, is I've got to start building my own foundry so I can melt down some aluminium and then cast these bad boys, machine the tops, and basically ready to bolt this thing onto the car and yeah, just rip straight away, go get a churn. So, that's awesome to see that this thing's progressed from that, seeing just basically drawings on a computer to the finished thing. So I'm super stoked with that. Let me know what you think in the comments, if you think that that looks great or if it's stupid, but I know I reckon it's gonna look rad. So as I was saying earlier, that bonnet seam should be about here. So all of that supercharger is poking out. The only other thing we'll have to look at is the throttle on the back of this thing. So we'll spin around and have a look at that. So here we have the rear end of the M122, and as you can see, it's a drive-by wire throttle body that they use on the STSV. Um, not sure yet whether I'm going to um, change my ECU and just end up going with the e-throttle setup or modifying this to end up using a mechanical one, because currently I use a Haltech Elite 2000, which doesn't have provisions for drive-by wire throttle, so I could just swap out the ECU for the 2500 and then put it in a e-pedal in the car, but... Other option is to unbolt this thing and potentially with how much room we've got below here, I could have it so the intake piping sort of does a 180 underneath potentially and mount the throttle maybe up the front there. I'm not sure things will have to sort of ponder over, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, I reckon. But for now, that thing's wicked. So if you made it this far in the video, thanks for sticking around. I really appreciate it. And yeah, basically now we're at the point where we've got to have a look at making this thing out of aluminium. So I'm unsure yet on actually how much I'm going to film of the whole making the foundry or casting and process. Um, if you're interested in seeing all of that detail, let me know in the comments and I might film that. Um, if not, you'll just see the cast aluminium manifolds sitting right here one day and then we'll whack it on the car, go get this thing tuned and see how much power it pumps out. So it'll be interesting to see the difference between this and the little old M90 over there. So if you've enjoyed this content, make sure to hit the like button, consider subscribing to the channel and see you next time with some cast aluminium manifolds for this M122. Bye.